Let us bow. Dear God, we're grateful to you tonight for this grand opportunity to come again in the name of the Lord Jesus, to meet our enemy, your enemy, out here on the field of battle with the Word, to drive him away from the midst of your people. That they might see tonight, Lord, the gospel light. I pray that you'll anoint our eyes with the eye salve. That it might be open to the truth that we might leave here saying within our hearts, did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us along the road? Heal the sick and the afflicted. Encourage the discouraged. Lift up the feeble hands that once hung down. May we look to the coming of the Lord Jesus, which we believe is at hand. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Seated. I will try to be briefly tonight because I know many has come from different uh, sections of the country to for the service or stayed over some of you and have to go back or maybe a, a way to get back. I thank you. This morning I wanted to hear Brother Neville myself and I heard him many times and never heard him many times, but what I appreciate him. But this morning, that timely message, I know I had the leading of the Lord to listen to that this morning. Very fine. And I see why you people like to come and listen to him also. And he'll always do you good, I'm sure, to listen to him. I was trying to catch up on some of my interviews today, this morning and this afternoon. I still have many, many, many to go. And um, I, as um, I believe as Jethro told Moses one time, said, it's just too much for you. Yeah. So we've got um, plenty of brothers here on your problems, and every one of them has been legitimate. And they are fine things that has to be taken care of. And I would recommend our pastor, Brother Mann, and other ministers of our faith here, if you can go to them, they tell you just exactly the thing to do. Some people, their children intermarrying are things that's wrong, and these men could help you just the same as, as anyone else because they're servants of Christ. And go to them, and I'm sure they will, they will give you the help that you need. I can't get to all of them. There's just so many. Everywhere you go, they just keep accumulating higher and higher, you see. And you want to get to every one of them, but you can't do it. But I'm constantly praying that God and somehow will work it out all right for you. Now, uh, tonight, we want to go to the Scripture and read a portion of the Scripture out of Genesis, the third chapter, and just refer back a little bit to some things that we've been talking about in times past and um, see if the Lord Jesus will give us a little uh, bit more to what we will know when we go out. I pray, pray that He will. Now the serpent was more substantial than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. May the Lord add the, his blessings to the reading of his word. Now, I would like to take a text tonight out of that and call Satan's Eden. Very crude little thing to say of Satan's Eden. It kind of matches in the other Sunday night, I believe, when I was speaking to you here about a thinking man's filter and a holy man's taste. And sometimes these little crude expressions brings us to something that gets us to study and puts you to reading the Word. And that's what I want all my congregation to do 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So read the word, study it, and study it with the eyes uh, of God to give your intellectuals understanding of how that we should live in this present day. Amen. Now, to come down tonight just to speak to you, to say, well, I could do this or that, uh, I'd like to speak with the people as much as I'd like to even go home with each one of you tonight. Uh, God knows that's truth. I'd like to go home with each one of you and, and eat, eat uh, breakfast with you in the morning and, and, and go out and squirrel hunt with you tomorrow afternoon. See, I, I'd like to do that, but I, I can't do that. And I would like to go home and just sit down and talk with you, sit on a porch at the service and speak with you a while, talk to you about your welfare and about God. I would love to do that. Men and women in here, God knows I'd like to do that. But I can't do it. It's just such, such a pull and a strain. And, and in this nervous age that we're living in, and I'm a nervous person myself. Today I got my mind made up to something. I've just got to do it. And tomorrow it's a million miles from me. Something's done. Cut in and done this and that. And you have a time trying to keep your wits together. But my main achievement is to preach the gospel to the church and do all that I can to bring honor to Jesus Christ in this day while I'm here on earth and what time I have left on earth. I come to, to try to say something to you that would help you. Something I studied after I went home this morning. What could I say tonight, Lord, that would help those people? Listen to that mighty message this morning on uh, Brother Neville brought us about, I thought it was so wonderful how he said there, a doctor will diagnose the case, but the man that comes with a pan full of needles, he gives the injection. So I thought that was really a... A real cute little <laughs> expression. I thought about that. The serum after the case is diagnosed. And so that's a very good thing. Uh, I want to speak to you something to bring something to enlighten to you the promise of God for this age. See? Something, not something that somebody else was in some other day, but something, and when them things are all right, we all refer to those things, but I thought I would try to bring something to your mind with these scriptures that got written here. That would enlighten you to know, make you a better soldier in the field that you're fighting in now. To learn the tactics of the enemy so that you can block everything before he gets to you. See, that's the main thing is to learn to keep the, the punches off of you as much as you can. Now, let us look now to this great, for a few minutes, this great sinful day that we're now living in. I don't believe there ever was a day that I've ever read in history. There's been greater days of persecution when the children of God was put to death on every hand. But to see the deceitfulness of the enemy, we've never had a day like this we're now living. It's the most cunning, deceitful day. And when I see that, it brings this, that the Christian has to be more on his toe today than he ever was in any age. Now, back in the days of the persecution of Rome to the church, a Christian make a mistake, he went into the arena and was fed to the lions or something like that when they found him of uh, being a Christian for his testimony. But his soul was saved because he was a purely unadulterated believer in God and Amen. gladly sealed his testimony with his blood as the veins let loose their holes in his body and the blood bleed out. He just cream up with real loyal faith and say, Receive my spirit, Lord Jesus. But now, the cunningness of the devil now makes the people believe that they are a Christian when they're not. Amen. There's a thing. You don't have to seal. It's a, it's a more cunning day than it would be than when you had to seal your, your life away Amen. with your testimony. The devil has set every cunning trap that he can. To He's a deceiver. And Jesus told us in Matthew 24 how this day would be that we're living in the most deceitful day that ever lived. So close that it would deceive the very elected of God if it were Amen. possible for him to deceive. Now let's compare some scriptures or prophecies spoken of in the Bible for today and compare it with the day that we're now living in. In 2 Timothy uh, 3, we learn this, that the prophets said that it would come to pass in these days that man would be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Compare that now just for a moment. We won't, we'll just brief it because we haven't that much time to go through it all uh, like we should duly take it. 
But just to highlight it so that you can see when you get home and study it. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are good. Now, the Spirit spoke expressly that these things would be in the latter days. That's these days. The prophecy speaking to it. Now, we read also in Revelation 14, uh, Revelation 3, 14, rather, the Lady of St. Church Age, that how the church would be in this last age. And it would be, it says, it was set as a widow and had need of nothing. It, it was rich and increased in goods and know it not that they were poor, miserable, wretched, blind, and naked, and didn't know it. The, now, remember, he's speaking to the church of this age. Wretched, blind, naked, and don't know it. That last phrase, that last word, is what makes it so striking. They think that they are well filled with the Spirit. They're already the Lady of Sin Church Age is the Pentecostal Church Age. Because it's the last church age. Luther had his message, Wesley had his message, and Pentecost had their message. Also, it said that because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, the emotions of the outside, the mental conception of the gospel, and because he said you're that way, I'll spew you out of my mouth. In other words, it made him sick uh, to see uh, the church in that condition. And remember, they spewed him out. And he was on the outside of the church trying to get back on the inside in that awful Lady of Sin church. The God of this world today, the worship person of this world today is Satan. And the people are ignorant of worshiping Satan. But it's Satan impersonating himself as the church. As the church. They worship Satan thinking that they are worshiping God through the church. But it's the way Satan has done it. Oh, you say, but wait a minute. We preach the Word. Look back here at my text tonight. Amen. Satan was the one who preached the Word to Eve first. God has said. See? It's that misconstruing that part of the Scripture that applies to the day. He lets you know all Jesus did was perfectly well. He lets you know all that Moses did was perfectly well. But when you take the promises that they gave for this day, then that was applied to another age. That's just all he has to do, see, yeah. is to get the people to believe it that way, and that's, that's all. For you cannot take one word away from it or add one word to it. But yeah. that's what he does. People ignorantly worshiping Satan, thinking they are worshiping God. Uh, <clears throat> as we're warned by prophecy in Second Thessalonians, that let's just read that. 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Let's just get it a moment if I can right away. I'd like to read that just to, I believe 2 Thessalonians. I got the scripture here and say, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus and by the gathering together unto him. Now see, the coming of the Lord and the gathering to him as God will gather his people Amen. to him in the last days. Amen. The gathering of the people to the Lord. Not to the church, to the law, Amen. gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in your mind or troubled, troubled neither by spirit nor word or by letter, as from us, as the day of the Lord is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means. Amen. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin, man Amen. of sin, watch what he is now. A man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That was Judas, Amen. see, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Amen. That deceitfulness of the church of the day. See, the son of perdition, the Amen. devil. Amen. The son of perdition, the devil. Then people worshiping Satan in this day, thinking they're worshiping God. But they're worshiping him through a creed, a man-made denominations and creeds. 
that's brought the people right down to the greatest deception that the world has ever known of. No matter how much the Word of God a promise for this day is preached and vindicated, they still won't believe it. Amen. They won't believe it. Then why? We wonder why. Why doesn't it? Why won't they believe it? When God said He'd do a certain thing and He does it. And still they turn their back from it and turn away from it. Just as Eve knew that what God said God would do. But she turned her back on it to listen to what he had to say. Just remember, in other ages, it's always been the same thing. In every age, it's always been that Satan tries to pervert that word to them, Amen. making them see some other age. Look, when Jesus come, see Satan was in that bunch of Jewish teachers and rabbis and priests trying to tell them to keep the law of Moses when their very word said that in that day the Son of Man would be revealed. Amen. See, that he would reveal himself. So they was trying, as long as they kept them religious and on the law of Moses, see what he did? He was trying to tell them that part of the word is just exactly right, but this man isn't that person. See how deceiving he is? That's that real day of deception. It's been, and now is, Satan establishing his kingdom in the earth. That's exactly why he's doing it. For he wants to establish his own kingdom. As a businessman, that's not a Christian. He'll work every scheme he can to make you see something the wrong way. If he's got a, a purpose and a personal gain in making you doing that, making you seeing it that way, he'll show you everything he can to keep you off from the truth of it. Amen. Because he's got a feeling only for himself. No matter how much he lies and cheats and whatever more, he's got personal gain, and that's why Satan's done this. And he's worked to the ministry to do it. Amen. As God promised He would do. Now, He began by a religious deceit in Eden and has continued ever since. Not by setting up a bunch of communists. Communists has nothing to do with this. It's the church that's where you have to watch. Amen. See? It's not, the, it's not Amen. the communists that would deceive the very elected. It's the church that will deceive the very elected. See, it isn't communists. We know they deny God. There are antichrists. Sure, they are in principle. But they are not the antichrist. The antichrist is religious. Very religious. And can quote the scripture and make it look so plain as Satan did back there in the beginning. He quoted everything right down. God has said, Thou shalt not eat every tree of the garden. See? Quote it right she said, yes, we may eat of all the trees of the garden, but there is a tree in the midst of the garden that God said not to eat for, not even touch it. Because the day we did, that day we die. He said, oh, surely you'll not die. But let me give you the reason why God said this. It's because, see, he, now what he quoted this truth, you see. He said, it'll open your eyes and it'll make you know good and wrong. You'll be like God then if you can do it. That's just what he wants to do. And that's just the same thing he's trying to do today. Amen. It's been a religious deceit since the very beginning of Eden and has been ever since. In Adam's time, it was a deceit. In Noah's time, it was a deceit. In Jesus' time, it was the same and now is the same. Amen. The same way of religious deceitfulness. Yeah. Now we will notice the earth when God had it under control. Now, when God had it, control, uh, had it under His control, then when Satan took over by... Uh, rejecting the Word of God. God one time had the earth under His control. He set it in this orbit. He put it, make it work. He done everything he had it in His control. Now we'll compare that with after Satan took it in His control. Now it took God 6,000 years. It didn't take Him that long, but He took that long. 6,000 years because we're taught that one day in heaven is a 1,000 years on earth and it was 6,000 years or 6 days that God built the earth. Now, it took God 6,000 years to establish it, plant it with good seeds, and to bring forth everything after its kind. Amen. Everything must come forth of its kind. All of His seeds were good, and so it must bring forth after its kind. God took 6,000 years. Finally, when He got it all made, and finally, we uh, finally arrived with its headquarters of the earth in a beautiful spot laying east of Eden called the Garden of Eden. 
God made the world's headquarters in the Garden of Eden in Egypt. Right at the east end of the garden was the headquarters. And over the whole situation, he put his son and his son's wife over all of it. Right? That's what God did. He put them in full control. They could speak to the winds and it would cease to blow. They would speak to the tree and it would move from here to there. The lion and the wolf fed together and the lamb laid down with them. There was no evil. It was perfect peace, perfect harmony, everything in perfection. And when God had it under his control, and it, notice he had, his, he had his world, he had all in operation, he had everything coming, everything eating vegetations, nothing to die, nothing to be ruined, nothing to be spoiled, nothing. It was just perfect. And over it all, he placed his beloved children, his son and his daughter, a husband and wife, to control it. God was so satisfied, and he rested from all his works at the seventh day, and hallowed the seventh day Sabbath for him. Because God looked it all over after you've been 6,000 years and molding it, and fixing it out, making it come into existence and put the mountains up and make the volcanics push the mountains up and the things that taken place in the eruptions, dried it off and fixed it the way you had it. And it was a beautiful place. There was nothing like it. The great paradises of God and the great dinosaurs and whatever more crawling through it and of the great animals, no harm in them. They were just as gentle as a little kitten. They had nothing at all, no, no sickness, no sorrow, not one disease germ on the earth. Oh, what a place. The great birds swinging from tree to tree, and Adam could call them by name, and they'd fly up on his shoulders and, and coo to him. And, uh, oh, what a wonderful place God had, and then made one of his attributes from his own body. God has attributes in his body, like you are an attribute of your father. And you notice you was in your grandfather's grandfather's grandfather's. But in that, say, we'll take it down to like you and your father. Now, you did not know anything when you were in your father. The germ of life comes from the male. The male has the blood cell. The woman has the, the egg. Now, Therefore, the blood cell has the life in it. And then when you were in your father, you actually know nothing about it, but yet science and God's Word proves that you were in your father. But you know nothing about it. But then the father longed to know you. And with the union of connection with mother, then you were made known to father. Now, you are your father's attribute. You look like him. And you've got parts of your body that looks like your father. Now, that's the way God was in the beginning. Every son of God and every daughter of God was in God at the beginning. You don't remember it now, but you were there. He knowed it. And he wanted you to become so he could contact you, speak with you and love you and shake your hands. Don't you want your own boy? Isn't it a great day when your boy and can come home and sit down at the table? When he comes back from the battlefield or something, another scarred up, how you fix the dinner, you kill a fatted calf or whatever more, and prepare for him, it's your own flesh and blood. And he was in you. You didn't know him then, but you knew he was there. And so God knew that we would be here. But then he put us in flesh so we'd be contacted. In order he could contact, he become one of us. Amen. When he become Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself the fullness of the manifestation of God. Therefore, that was God's purpose to display His attributes in fellowship. When I was in my father, I knew nothing about it. But when I became His son and was born of Him, I was an attribute, a part of my father. And you're a part of your father. And as children of God, we are a part of God's attribute that was in Him, made flesh like He was made flesh, so we can have fellowship one with the other, as a family of God upon the earth. And that was God's purpose at the beginning. Yes, sir, that's what God wanted at the beginning. He had everything under control, and He turned man over into the Garden of Eden on free moral agents and said, Son, it's yours. What a beautiful place.
God was so satisfied till he just went back and rested from all of his works. Every tree never brought forth thorns and thistles. No berries ever come off of a thorn tree. Everything was perfect. All seeds were perfect. Everything was in perfect condition. Then, when he went to take a little rest, his enemy slipped in with deceit and took it over by misinterpreting his program to his children. Amen. When he put trust in his own child, as you put trust in your daughter when she goes out at night with a man, when you put trust in your son, when he has to go with a drinking boy or smoking boy, see, he put trust in his son that he would not do anything wrong and would keep every word that he said. But the enemy slipped in like that greasy slicker that uh, would take out your daughter and misbehave himself or, or some woman would take, go out with your son and the same thing. See, he slipped in the enemy of God slipped in and misinterpreted the word to Eve. Now, he by this fall, it has took over and possessed the Garden of Eden himself. He yeah. took it over and now he has had 6,000 years of deceitful rule. Amen. Deceiving the people, God's children, as he did then because they were based on free moral agency to act any way they wish to, and believing that they would act right or trusting they would act right, then they'll come with the wrong act and sold their birthrights, as Esau did, for the world. Amen. And Satan won it. And he took it over, and he's had 6,000 years to build up his Eden, as God had 6,000 years to bring his Eden to a close. And by deceit, deceit of the word of the people, now established his own Eden in this earth in sin. God's Eden was established in righteousness. Amen. Satan's Eden is established in sin because Satan is sin. Amen. God is righteousness. Amen. God's kingdom was established in righteousness Amen. and peace and life, and Satan's establishment is in sin Amen. and religious sin. Amen. Notice how he deceived his deception? As he said he would. He promised to do this. Did anybody know that? Let us turn to Isaiah. Uh, if you want to some of these scriptures, if you I ought to quote more of my guests. Let's turn to Isaiah, the 14th chapter, just a moment. And just see what Satan said here, just a moment. And Isaiah 14, we'll read it. And watch what this fellow done. Isaiah 14, begin with the 12th verse. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars, that suns, stars of God, and I will set also upon the mount of the congregation, the side of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. Yeah. Now compare that over here with our other scriptures over in Thessalonians a while ago. How he said he sets in the temple of God. Exalting himself above all is called God. Amen. So that he has God is worshipped as God upon the earth. There's the God of this world I preached to you about last Sunday. Here he is today in deceit. That treacherous hour. That tremendous time that we're living. It's the most glorious time of all the ages. Because we're facing the great millennium again. We're facing the Eden again. But right at this age, all the deceit and every tactic that he's ever used and been able to deceive with, he's gathered it all together and reinforced himself and come down like God and put himself in place of God, religious, and can quote the Scripture and can tell you Scripture, just as Satan did to Eve in the Garden of Eden, but leave out one spot of it. It's all he has to do. Make that gap. Where the poison doctrine of the devil can pour through like the thinking man's filter we was talking about the other night. Amen. Now, he said he would exalt himself above the Most High. He would ascend above the clouds of the stars. And he would sit there like God and be above the Most High. And he has succeeded in carrying out his threats. Amen. He has certainly had a marvelous success in carrying out his threats. 
by the people letting him explain away in every age the value of God's promised word to that age. That's exactly how he's done it. In every age he explained it away. In the days of Noah, he explained that it was impossible for it to rain from heaven. For there's no rain up there. His great scientific gospel that he preached in the Garden of Eden, he could shoot the instruments to the moon and prove there's no moisture up there. But God said there would come a rain. Amen. But Satan succeeded and poisoned the mind of the people by scientific research that it could not be done. But it was done. God said it would be done. And it was done. He did. Now, in the days of, uh, of Jesus, he did the same thing. He poisoned their minds again by deceit. See, misinterpreting the word. If thou be the Son of God, now let me see you do something about it. Jesus didn't clown for him. He never did. God's not a clown. He don't have to answer anything as Satan asked. He only had, Jesus said, It is written, Thou shalt not live, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He didn't have to clown from him. He didn't have to make bread. He could have done it. But he'd been listening to the devil, so he didn't have to listen to the devil. And again, it is a religious sin, as at the beginning. So deceitful. Watch it now. It's not just purely old everyday sin, committing adultery and getting drunk and using God's name in vain. That's not it. Now, you remember years ago, many of you here, the old timers, remember that sermon I preached on the disappointments of judgment? The harlot, she ain't going to be disappointed there. She knows where she's going. The drunkard ain't going to be disappointed there. The bootlegger, the gambler, the liar, the thief, he's not going to be disappointed. But that man who thinks he's right, Amen. there's the disappointment. That's that fellow. Say, come say, Lord, have not preached the gospel, have not cast out devils in thy name. Jesus said, depart from you, from me, you that work iniquity. I never even knew you. Amen. There's the Amen. disappointment. See, that deceitfulness. That's what I'm constantly... That's where I'm so misunderstood. It's not that I want to be different. I don't want to be different. But I've got to be honest. I have a message, and that must go to the people. Makes it very much misunderstood amongst the people. They think I'm against everybody. They only know I'm for everybody. And try my best to bring them what's the truth. Just as it's laid on my heart. And the way it's laid in the Bible here. And God proves that to be the truth. Amen. So there's nothing else can be done about it. Amen. So men either look at it or they don't. See, they don't want to see it because they have already sold out, Amen. sold their birthrights Amen. to some organization, some denomination, to Amen. try their birthrights to get to heaven upon the basis of some organized religion, which Satan is ahead of every bit of it. Amen. God never did have an organized religion. Amen. Never did. And they sell out to that. Or they, a bunch of men interpret the word. And say it means this and it means that. God needs no interpreter. He does His own interpreting. He doesn't need anyone else to tell Him how to do it. He's sovereign. He said how He would do it, and that's why He must keep His word. When He said, These signs shall follow them that believe, He meant just that. Whatever He said would take place, He said it would happen in these last days, that He would do certain things, and He'd done it. He has to ask nobody whether it's time or not. He knows what the time is, what the plan is. Now, Satan, this deceiver, as spoke of in Matthew 24, 24, was so much deceit. Now we find that by his gospel programs of knowledge, better education, higher ethics, civilization, and so forth, has bewitched Amen. the people that wants to serve God into believing his lie. Amen. Eve did not want to do that, but he showed her how it was more wisdom in it. She didn't know. She wanted to know. She didn't understand, but she wanted to understand. And God told her not to try to understand. Amen. How can I understand any of these things? I cannot understand them. I believe them. I don't have to understand them. God is faith and not understanding. Amen. We just believe what He said. Now compare God's Eden to Satan's now. After 6,000 years of perverting of the true interpretation of God's promised word to the age... Let's compare it now and see where we get. Like he did to the church in, in Christ's time in Jesus, trying to keep, uh, keep back uh, God's loyal sons from knowing the truth. That's God's... God put his sons here, his attributes, to fellowship with him by hearing his word. 
What if your father told you, and you are a loyal son to your father, and he told you, son, don't you go in that water out there swimming because he's gators in that water. And a fellow comes back and says, surely such pretty water as that, there's no gators in it. Now, who are you going to listen to? If you're a genuine son, you listen to your daddy. And a genuine son or daughter of God takes God's word first. I don't care what anybody else says about it. They take God's word first. It's poison in the cup. And they believe it. Having faith in all his word, his seeds, brought an Eden of holiness, love, and eternal life. That's what God's Eden produced. Holiness. And it brought an Eden of holiness, of love, understanding, perfection, and eternal life. That's what God's planning. His word, his seed, that's what his church will be at the end. It'll be the same thing. Amen. Notice, here's a thought. Don't forget it. I'll get to it some other time or some other message. But you know, God said, let every seed bring forth of its kind. Amen. Is that God's commandment? Amen. Now, what good has any preacher or anybody else tried to make that word say something else? Amen. See, every word of God is a seed. Jesus said so. Amen. A seed of sower so. So if Mark 16 is God's word, It'll bring forth of its kind. If Malachi 4 is God's word, it'll bring forth of its kind. And every other promise must bring forth of its kind. You see, see Satan out here in disguisement? He's trying to say, it not, it's not so. Do you understand it? Amen. See, Satan said, oh, that ain't for this day. That, that, that's, that, that was some other time. That, I don't even mean that. Every seed must come forth of its kind. Yeah. That's how God establishes Eden. Is that right? Yeah, amen. And here it is. That's how God establishes His church. Hallelujah. Every word after its kind. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeding out of the mouth of God. See? Satan, he'll take something else. But God said, every seed after its kind. Amen. If the promise said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now the church says, Join the church. Recite the creed. Know the catechism. There's not such things in the whole Bible. But Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they take up serpents or drink deadly things, it won't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Who is any man to deny that? See, every seed will bring forth of its kind. If you are a seed of God, an attribute, a son of God, then the Word of God is sown in you. Amen. See? Yeah. And then when you hear the Word of God, my sheep hear my voice, a stranger they won't follow. Amen. You get it? Then every seed comes forth after its own kind. Now we find out that every seed bringing forth of its kind, there was no death in, the new, in that Eden. There will be no death in the new Eden. See? Amen. There was no, nothing else but holiness, purity, and eternal life. Now, by unbelief and all of God's Word, has brought the seed of unholiness in Satan's Amen. Eden. We are now entering in where Satan is taking the throne as the Antichrist in a, a Eden of this earth, a Eden of sin, Amen. perverted religion. He started not upon, I am Satan, I am the great angel. No, not upon that, but upon perverting God's Word. And that's how he's brought his kingdom in every age, and now in this great deceitful age, ready to take his throne by his people. He's built himself an intellectual, educated, scientific Eden. Right. Scientific preachers. Scientific church. Scientific theology. Everything is scientific. Everything's on basis of knowledge. The whole church is built upon knowledge. It ain't built upon faith. One time I went in to hold a meeting to a man's church. It was a great auditorium in the West. A fine man. And he denied these things that we're talking about. I liked him. Fine man, old man. When his congregation went out, it seated about 6,000 people. When his congregation went out in the afternoon service, about 1,500, they were all fine-dressed intellectuals. I sat there and watched them. 
He preached a very good sermon. The man did. And then he asked if anybody wanted to accept Christ just to raise up their hands. And no one raised up their hands. And finally, a woman raised up her hands. He said, all right, now you're a Christian. And made her for baptism. And then when he went out, he dedicated a baby, kissed a little baby, and made a prayer over it, and dismissed the audience. When his congregation went out, all fine, scholarly, educated people, then I staying on the side to shake the man's hand and wish him Godspeed as he went out. And when I did, here come my crowd in. They couldn't let him in while his crowd is there. Here come mine in wheelchairs, stretchers, straight jackets, insane, and everything else. See the difference? That's it. That's the thing I'm talking about, see? see? It's something different. When by scientific knowledge... You can make an understanding gospel. Of, you, he that believeth on Jesus Christ shall not be condemned. See? But these signs shall follow them that believe. See, he fails to put that in there. See? She believed on Jesus Christ. She saved. If these signs follow the believer. And he that heareth my word, not just makes that not hear it with his ears, but understand it. <laughs> Anybody can hear it. A prostitute can hear it and remain a prostitute. See? A drunkard can hear it. A liar can hear it. And still remain a liar. But he that understandeth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. Amen. There you are. See? And no man can do that except God foreordained him. Yeah. Jesus said, No man can come to me except my Father draws him and all the Father's giving me will come to me. Amen. Amen. It's all the sovereignty and foreknowledge of God. Yeah. He lives alone and nobody tells him what to do. Now, by unbelief, and the, taking all the Word of God has brought a seed of unbelief, unholy, sinful, hatred, and eternal death is in this sinful intellectual church age. Now, you got it? And this day, that when the whole world is religious. Did you know that? Amen. The whole world is religious. Amen. And in this religious age, big churches on every corner. Everything, the whole thing winds up in Satan being worshipped. Here it is right here in the Bible. Amen. That's right. And in this intellectual, theological seminaries that's brought out an intellectual person that's been trained how to speak, what to do, how to make their emotions, and everything like psychology, three and four years, to know how to deal with a man's mind. See, it's the Spirit of God is not something that you, is schooled into you. Amen. It's something that's predestinated into you by the hand of Almighty God. Amen. Your experiences cannot be schooled or taught into you. It's predestinated by God's hand and God's foreknowledge Amen. into you. That's right. Now, it brought forth this great Eden that they now live in, a church world's Eden. They're all uniting together now at the great ecumenical council and go to have the world church. All coming under one head where Satan will be thrown just exactly. And the last call is going out to catch the bride before she gets into that. For once in that, she's tucked the mark of the beast and doomed. Amen. She'll never come out of it. That's where he said, come out from among them, my people, before he goes into him. See? Come out from among them and be separated. Now, hatred and death and eternal separation from God in this Eden. Lust, filth, perversion. How? By sowing the wrong seed. Reminds me of the vision I've seen before I ever met the Pentecostal people. Of that man going around the world in white. You've heard me tell it many times. The one coming behind him sowing seeds of discord. But he won it fairly in Eve, in the Garden of Eden, by the lust of Eve for sin. The lust for Eve of sin. Then if Eve lusted for knowledge, it was sin. And when we lust for knowledge, want a Ph.D., L.L.D., it's sin to do so. Amen. That's strong statements, but that's the truth. Amen. No matter how strong it is, it's still the truth. Amen. Amen. The lust for knowledge, understanding, the thing of it is, is today we don't try to establish the Word of God in the people's hearts, Amen. we're trying to establish ourselves. Oh, Churches yeah. are trying to establish the doctrine of the church in the person's heart. Amen. 
We are commanded to establish the Word of God. Paul said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man, that your faith might rest upon the knowledge of man, but I come to you in power and manifestations of the Holy Ghost, that your faith might rest in God. There you are. Man must establish yourself. We find it amongst, let God do something for a person, send him out. You find every man trying to impersonate it. See, they're trying to establish themselves. Every man, I did this. Me, I, mine, my denomination, me, this. Establish themselves. What are we preaching about? Ourselves or the kingdom of God? Establish the word of God. Take out the unbelief. And establish the kingdom of God in a man's heart. And a kingdom of God cannot be established in a man's heart unless God made that man thus. Amen. He cannot be established in a... And remember, the deceitful part, that man think that it's right. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Every intellectual being seems right. As I told you a few Sundays ago, when I stood by my dying baby, and Satan standing there and said, There's your daddy died in your arms the other night. There's your wife laying down there in, a, in the morgue. And here's your baby going and you asked him to answer you and you pulled your, he pulled a shade down over you. Now, and yet he's a good God. And yet you said he was a healer. And you who are standing for what you said was right, you're wrong. Oh, every reason, every mental faculty had to agree that it was right. And he was right that much. So was he right when he told Eve, your eyes will be open. And you'll know right from wrong. And you'll be as God's that way, knowing right from wrong. Because God didn't let them see themselves yet that they were naked. So they know they would know right from wrong. And He was right. But you see, it was contrary to the Word of God. And so does ministers in seminaries learning man-made theology. It may seem right. It may be a good understanding of a thing. But it's wrong. We don't have to understand it. We believe it because God said it so. And that settles it for us. The whole thing. It's the way you believe it. Oh, how Eve lusted to have a Ph.D. How she lusted to be smarter than what she was. Notice how much alike man and his wife. Now, notice man and wife, both naked and the Garden of Eden, God's Eden. Now, I'm going to close. I said I'd go to hold just a few minutes. Look, watch now. It's closing. Compare this now. How much alike that man and his wife, both in God's Eden, without one stitch of clothes on them, and knew it not. For why didn't they know it? For they were veiled to their senses of nakedness by the holy veil of the Holy Spirit. They could look right at each other and they didn't know that they were naked. They were veiled with the Holy Spirit of holiness. They were veiled. God's veil, yet today, can look and not lust. They turn their head. It's a holy veil. Holy veil. God had their eyes. They were both. One was man and the other was woman. And they did not know they were naked. Because the holiness of God kept their eyes veiled. Notice, God hid their conscience from uh, from sin by the holy veil. Wish we had some time to lay on that a few minutes. Look here. For He, the worshiper, once purged Hebrews, the worshiper, once purged, has no Amen. more conscience of sin. Sin has passed from him. I heard Brother Neville say this morning, someone might have been asking him, why did I preach on the Holy Ghost? Why did I do this? Here it is. Amen. The Holy Ghost is an action in you. It's a life. Amen. Not an emotion. Amen. Not some sort of a fleshly evidence. But Amen. it is a person. Amen. Jesus Amen. Christ. The Word of God established in your heart to quicken every word of this age. Right? Watch the Holy Ghost in action. Not so much in demonstrations, but in action. What it does according to the Word. Notice, now, the Holy Spirit of God's Holy Word had a man and woman naked and didn't know it. 
How beautiful. Life of the Word, the seed. The Word God said, there is a tree in the midst of the garden, the woman. And in the midst of the garden is this tree. Don't even touch it. For the day you eat thereof, that day you die. They were wholly veiled from it. Didn't know nothing about it. Never stood to touch it. They were wholly veiled. They were safe in God's pavilion. They were alive. They had no death around them. Hallelujah! They had perfect love one for the other, perfect life forever. They had perfect love, perfect understanding of the love of God. They had God's Word and kept it, and they were alive and safe in God's Eden with no death at all around. Then Satan got Eve to listen to his gospel of theology, the gospel of knowledge, higher schooling, higher ethics, better civilization, higher education, and so forth. Then when he got to her to stop and listen to him a minute, to his reasonings, which we are commanded to cast down, when he got her to listen to it, now look here, the church is so and so, it's been established for so long, that we're one of the oldest churches in the country. The mayor of the city goes, I don't care what it is, see, if it's against God's word, be against it. That's your enemy. Anything that's against the word is your enemy. Everything that's for the word is your brother. Is a part of you. Notice, she pulled off the holy veil to see what sex really was. Compare that. What lust really would do. She pulled the veil from off her eyes. The holy thing that God had put over her eyes, she wanted knowledge to know what it was all about. So she pulled the veil off to see what it was all about. She listened to the devil. And notice what a place it put her in. They have done the same in each age thereafter, always taking the intellectual side, and has now built a kingdom of Satan, knowledge, his seed that he sowed, and has took the world to be an Eden of death. Now, notice. Now look. At Revelation 3, the lady is seeing church age. You think it in your mind. I know She, Eve, is Satan's queen. See, Satan, the serpent, got to Eve before Adam got to her. See? That's right. Amen. So he beguiled her. See, so Satan, the serpent, was the husband of Eve before Adam ever knew him. He beguiled her. The Bible said he did. And she knows she was naked then. See, now, look at the, uh, the lady in church age. She, Eve, is setting as Satan's queen. She's rich in worldly goods, blind, naked again, and don't know it. Just like it was in God's Eden. But now, not because the holy veil is over her face, but the lust veil that she took off God's holy veil and put on a veil of knowledge for lust. And now she has a lust veil that she is blind to it being sin. She's naked on the street and don't know it. She's a prostitute on the street. Women with these shorts on in God's sight is a prostitute and don't know it. Notice, take our women... Now, if you want to see what condition the church is in, watch the way women are acting. She always represents the church. In Satan's Eden of sin and unbelief, a religious perversion, perverted kingdom. Instead of taking God's Word, they took the intellectual learning of man. Instead of taking the church, they took the organization. And they're bringing it to one great head. Now notice, perverted from innocence, don't miss this now, the church has been with this lust veil on. Notice what it's done to her. It's, it's perverted her from innocence to knowledge. Okay? The holy veil, she was innocent. With the lust veil, she's knowledge. She knows it's pleasant. She knows what it does. See? It's a fruit, a tree to be desired. Making one wise. See? 
She is perverted from innocence to knowledge, from holiness to filth Amen. and lust, and from life to death. Amen. This kingdom has to die. This kingdom shall die. The God of heaven will destroy it from the face of the earth. Notice, in this perversion, it's become from a man to a woman, and from a woman to a man. And don't know it. A very good product of Satan's Eden, if you'll watch the streets today at our modern people. Notice, it was Eve that Satan used to make Adam sin by her power of lust. Now, the same, doing the same thing today. Notice, bobbed hair, painted faces, sexually dressed. See? She does that and don't know that every one of those things is contrary to the Word of God. Amen. To cut her hair makes her a dishonorable woman, a prostitute. Amen. To wear shorts puts her disgracefully. But sexy dresses on her makes her a prostitute. Amen. And she don't know it. Not because of the holiness of God, but because of the lust of Satan. Amen. She caused her as she causes her Adam to lust for her. She took off the clothes that God dressed her in back in Eden for her journey through the, this wilderness. She took them off. She stripped herself down. When God had her wrapped all over in skins, she's beginning to shave a little off each time. Now she's back to where she was at the beginning. Now she's got her Adam to wearing her underneath clothes. A man put on them little old sissy looking shorts. Amen. And you get out here, I don't Hallelujah. think there's much man to him. Amen. He is the biggest sissy I know of. Amen. See, she's got her perverted Adam to act like she, see? Yeah. Wearing her underneath pose. She's seen what she could do out in her when she took off all of her clothes but her underneath ones. Yeah. That's the shorts. Of course, that's a woman's underneath clothes. And here her Adam is wearing them now. Which, according to God's original word, is an abomination Amen. for a woman to put on a garment that pertains to a man, and a man to put on a garment that pertains to a woman. Amen. From the original word. Think of it. Now, he now wears her bangs also. He combs them down, puts a curler in them. Some of the most sickly sights I've ever seen in my life is some of those kids out here today with their bangs combed down like this and colored bleached hair with some kind of a peroxide something and bleached hair and rolling it in curlers making bangs. You big sissy. Amen. That's a horrible thing to say from a pulpit, but judgment begins at the house of God. Amen. You don't even know where you're a man or woman. Amen. And I understand that our United States Army is coming out next in shorts. Oh my Lord. That's right. See what the perversion is? It's a woman's clothes. Where's her bangs? The other day I was over at Howard Johnson's. Not this one here, but one on the road going out. And I just sat back in the amazement. Here come a little boy along his mouth open. And he had dark hair here and he combed it over this way and put a roller in it and curled it up around top of his eyes. Looking out the top of his eyes going around. If I ever seen a perversion, see, he wouldn't believe it. He could prove maybe he was male, but in his spirit he's female. He don't know what side of the house he belongs on. Amen. That's all right. How perverted. That's what Satan does. He perverts the nations. He perverts the church. He perverts the people. He is a deceiver, a perverter of the original truth. God made a man a man. He made a woman a woman and he dressed them different. And he meant for them to stay that way and to act that way. One is finished, the other is masculine. He separated Adam in the Garden of Eden and did this. Separated Eve from him. Now, where's her bangs? She cuts her hair like his. Amen. And he tries to wear his like hers. Amen. She wears his outside clothes, and he wears her inside clothes. Amen. Now, that sounds sacrilegious, but I don't mean it that way. No. It's an absolute gospel truth. Amen. If you don't know it, then there's something wrong with you. Amen. You're either blind or never been on the streets. Amen. And she thinks and he thinks that it's right. Yes. They're getting along somewhere. Yes. Women says, well, it's so hot. The old Apache Indians out there make you shame yourself. More heat they get, the more clothes they put on. Keep the sun off of them. Oh, make you sweat so you can have an air conditioner as they walk. Yeah. 
They stand around in the sun, you couldn't stand nothing, you blister and burn. But you see, it's what we call higher education. Modern science has produced this. Oh my, there she is naked, and Lady Osea, and don't know it, she was naked in Eden. See the two kingdoms alike? One is of sin and death, the other is life and righteousness. And there she was veiled with a holy veil. They were both naked. They didn't know it. They didn't know nothing about it because they were veiled with God's Spirit. And here they're veiled with lust. And they look at one another. To See, Adam could look at Eve and didn't know she was naked. But now with this lust veil, she doesn't realize she's naked, but she does it under this lust veil to make man look at her. It's the only thing she can do it for. You don't believe that, but you do it anyhow. And man looked. And he found out you got so much attraction that he come around and put some of your clothes on himself. Oh, what a perversion. What an age, what a time. Really, how deceitful it is. Oh, all these things and don't know it. A perfect, perverted spirit is in the man. He's veiled from the lust of Satan, and the woman is too. It's the satanic spirit of a great society. See, they don't know, but they're an organization. Women with shorts on belongs to an organization. Men dressed like that is on an organization. I'll give you the abbreviation of it. BSS, Big Sister Society. So that's what they belong to. Come out there, a big sister society with that a little, it's so big old naughty looking, dirty looking thing. I, I, man, I, you may differ me at this, but that's the truth. Amen. You have been perverted and don't know it. Amen. You're not, don't act like a man no more. Amen. See? Coming so soft and they starting to be nothing to them anymore. Men and women too. They are a society. There's an organization. Why? John next door wore shorts, so why can't I? Luella wanted me to wear them because uh, uh, John wore them next door. And, well, uh, if, if Susie Jane can wear them, so can Martha Jane wear them. Or Susie, Lou, whatever who her name is. See? See, it's a society. It's an organization. You spiritually belong to it and don't know it. And if that's so, and we see it so, so are you blinded. Amen. You're blinded to these denominations that Satan has twisted you into. Amen. And it's the perversion of Amen. God's original word yeah. and His kingdom and His plan for His children. Yes. Satan has twisted men and women into these things. And they don't know it. A perverted. No longer a son of God. Bangs hanging down his face and a pair of shorts on trucking down the street. A son of God. Deacon in a church, a pastor in a pulpit. No, that ain't a son of God. Amen. He never come through God's stinking filter. Amen. He wouldn't have them women's clothes on. Amen. He sure wouldn't either, but she had the man's clothes on. Amen. See, it's not a son of God, it's a son of Satan Amen. and a daughter of Satan. Amen. Hard thing to say. Satan has succeeded in perverting and taking over this world and making it his kingdom. That man was put on by free moral agency to choose for themselves what kind of life they desired. And that shows what's in your heart. Hey, your voice, you know what? Your action speaks so loud, it drowns your voice. Mm-hmm. Let me go to a man and say, Oh, I, we're all Christians. We belong to church and strip teases hanging all over his office. <laughs> it would make no difference what he told me. I know better. Amen. So would you. Amen. Let a woman say she's a Christian with short hair. Uh-huh. You know better than that. Amen. Yes, sir. Let her say she's a Christian wearing paint and makeup and That's shorts and say she's a Christian. You know better than that. The Word of God teaches you better than that. Amen. The Word says she can't do it and be a Christian. Amen. She's even dishonorable. And everything. How is God going to put a dishonorable thing in His kingdom? No, sir. Amen. Not at all. No, sir. The sales it shows their desire. You can't get a dove to eat with a buzzard. Not at all. A dove don't have any gall. He can't eat that old Karen. If he took a bite of it, it would kill him, and he knows it. But a buzzard can eat most anything he wants to. He's got plenty of gall. So then you find out that's the way it is with the world today. Same thing. They're naked, blind, and don't know it. Satan did it by the woman's lust for knowledge, for sex, which she chose by her own choosing. Now, notice, it was Eve that led Adam to the wrong. And it was a woman that took off her clothes before her Adam took off his. It's the woman. Always. It's always been. It still is the same way. It's the church that leads the man astray. It's the church that leads the man that want to be a son of God. It's the woman, the church. Not the Bible. God. For the Bible is man. 
Oh, yeah, the Word was made flesh and He was a man. See? The Bible is man, the church is woman. See, it isn't the church, the Bible, that leads the man astray. It's the church that leads him astray. It's the church he went naked with, not the Bible. See, no, indeed, the Bible tells him he's naked. Yes, sir. Now, notice how by sex, desire of sex, she lusted for knowledge to know what was this and how whether this fruit was good or not, and she did it. God will take it back someday, oh, Amen. by a man. It was shredded by a woman, but it was redeemed by a man. The man, Jesus Christ, which is the Word. And then what is it? Notice in closing. Here not long ago, I made this statement. I got about four or five more pages in there, but I of uh, scriptures and things I want to refer to. But listen, let's close in saying this. Remember here not long ago, I was teaching you on the seven trumpets, the feast of trumpets and so forth. And I said, there is an eighth day festival. So the seventh day would be the last. That'd be the millennium. But there is an eighth day festival. Which if it was the eighth and it's only seven days, would make it the first day again. Come right back to the first day. Then after the millennium is over, then there will be an established Eden again. God's great kingdom will be taken back because Jesus fought it out with Satan in the Garden of Gethsemane and won back the Eden which is gone to prepare in heaven to return again. Up in heaven, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. When he was here on earth, he said, you, you Jews, you believed in God. Now, I know I got a bad name, he says, and they'd say him this, that, there. But you believed in God, and as you believed in God, believe also in me. He was God manifested. Uh, believe also in my Father's house are many, or in my Father's economy, in my Father's plans is many palaces. I'll go to prepare a place. Look how long it is, 1,500 square miles. Say, where's it at? He's gone to prepare. He's creator. He creates all that gold. The streets are transparent. He's creator. He's making a place. On Revelation 21, he said, And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven. There was no more sea. The first heaven and first earth was passed away. What was the first heaven? It was the millennium. What's the first earth? Was this? It'll be renovated. Just like it was baptized by Noah in the days of his preaching, was sanctified by Christ as he sprinkled his blood upon it, and be renovated. Take all the germs and everything off of it in the renovation at the end of the fire baptism. That'll kill every germ, every sickness, every disease, every filth that's ever on the earth. She'll burst forth and come forth a new earth. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. First heaven, this first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven. There God will be with His true attributes, sons and daughters. Amen. Or He can fellowship with them in holiness, with their eyes blinded to any sin. There'll never be no more sin from there on. Let us strive hard. Don't be deceived in this day, Amen. but strive to enter in at the gate. For all that will be left out will be whoremongers. Lusters, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already. All without sorrow will be ill-famed women, ill-famed men, and so forth. And only those that are redeemed and in the Lamb's book of life will enter in at the gate. So strive, friends. Don't be deceived in this last day. This is a great time. Everybody's got money. Everybody can do this and everybody can do that. And money flowing every way and big cars and everything. There won't be one of them in that city. Oh, yeah. There won't be one car, one airplane. No, it'll be a, altogether a different civilization. Yeah. It'll be again a civilization not of knowledge, not of science, but of innocence and oh, faith hallelujah. in the living God. Yeah. Let us strive to enter into that. Yeah. For that's my whole purpose, is to enter into that city someday. Amen. And just look back. Come along with me. See every one of you marching. When we sing, the saints go marching in. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as the days are closing and we see it drawing nigh, the promise is drawing nigh, we pray, dear God, that you'll place that upon our hearts so we won't make any mistake. Dear God, keep our conscience pure. Keep our hearts veiled, Lord, our eyes veiled from the things of the world and vain things of the world, vain glory to become some big somebody. No matter how big they are, all kings, monarchs, potentates, and everything else has to perish. And they will not rise in the, sec in the first resurrection. 
For it's written, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, on which the second death has no power. Oh, God, the second death, the spiritual death, has no power, is redeemed. Oh, God, to think at one of these hours, one will be going to visit the other and be caught up. Two in the bed, I'll take one and leave one. Two in the field, I'll take one and leave one. Oh, God, help us to be pure and in the sight of you, Lord, no matter what man thinks about us, what other people say, Lord, let our holy, our conversations be holy. Let it be seasoned with God's Word. It's so seasonable, Lord, that there's no guile found in us. While we plead in our own mistakes that the blood of Jesus Christ will stand between us and God, that He'll look down upon us through the blood of Jesus, not upon our own righteousness or who we are, what we've done, but upon His merits alone. God grant it. May not one who sat here tonight and heard the message, may not one of them be lost in the least child to the oldest person. May their holy desire be only for God and His Word. We know not what hour He may appear or what hour He may summons us to answer up yonder at the judgment. We don't know what hour he may, as it was, take our card from the rack. Amen. Says homecoming time, you've got to go. God help us to keep pure. Help us. Grant it, Lord. May we live till the coming of the Lord, if it be possible. Help us. May we do everything that's in our power with love and understanding. Grant understanding that God is searching the world today, finding ever lost sheep. Yes. May we talk to them with seasoned prayer of love. And the Word of God, that we might find that last one so we can go home and get out of this old Eden of Satan here, Lord, that's all built up on lust and beautiful women as so-called in the world with their uh, advertisements on there. Right? We advertise and want boys to come with jam on their faces and pretty girls with shorts on. Right on our radios and televisions and all kind of filth and gum and Hollywood, all kinds of sexy, dirty, filthy dresses for women and a man being perverted and taking women's apparel and work, cutting their hair like women and women like men. Oh, God, what a horrible hour we're living in. Oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord. Cleanse us by the blood. Take all filth and guile away from us. Let us live, Lord. Let us live under the blood constantly before you. It's our heart's desire and our sincere plea. Dear God, laying on this plat or those desk tonight where the gospel has been laid, Lord, here lays handkerchiefs and little parcels that go into the sick and afflicted. Let the prayer of faith, Lord, fall from our hearts now in your sight. Then, Lord, if there be any unclean thing in us, Lord, take, our, take us to judgment now and we plead for mercy. Reveal to us what we're doing wrong, Lord, so we can ask to take the blood and cleanse us. Heal these sick people and make them well, Father, whatever it's going to, wherever they go. Let it be so, Father. Give us a determination to serve you and you only. Grant it, Lord. Grant safety to these dear people that's on their road home. Thank you for how you've healed the people. And Sister Shepherd, Brother Shepherd's little boy, hurt on the bicycle, I pray that no evil will come to that. The little fellow riding his bicycle, I pray that he'll be all right. We thank you for your healing of these others that we've asked for. And we know that what we ask, we receive because we have confidence in the one that made the promise. Give us of thy grace, Lord, and forgive us of our sins. We ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Do you love him? Amen. Do you believe him? Amen. Are you sick and tired of Satan's kingdom? Amen. Do you believe it's coming to the millennium? Until his millennium? His, to his Eden? You believe it's been formed today? Look, everything is based upon intellectuals. All, everything has to be scientifically proved before they'll believe it. And you cannot scientifically prove God. You have to accept Him by faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Oh God, I don't want to know nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses me from sin. I know nothing but Jesus Christ. As Paul said of old, so I'll say I tonight, I know nothing among you. Oh, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's all I know to tell you. That this Bible, I believe with all my heart, if I know my heart, to be the perfect, unadulterated Word of God. By this, I live. By this, I stand. If I had 10,000 lives, I'd like to give every bit of it 
for this Word. Amen. Or it's the yeah. Word of Jesus Christ. And I don't care how much they can try to disprove it, how much science tries to say Amen. it isn't trustworthy and so forth. To me, it's the only thing in the world I can trust. Amen. Is this Amen. He is mine. I love Him. Bless don't you? Amen. If there's a sin in your heart, if there's a thought in your heart, Amen. if you've got anything, pray now and ask God to forgive you. Yes. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. God yes. bless you. Amen. It's my prayer. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you, till we meet again. Do you love one another? John said, little children, love one another. Love one another. For love covers the multitude of sin. Yes. Amen. Now let's shake one another's hand. God be with you till we meet till we meet till we meet Now be kind to one another. Be kind to everybody. Treat your neighbor right. Keep yourself unspotted. Jesus Christ. Till we meet. Till we meet. God be with you. Till we meet. You love him. That's my prayer. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. I've got to go back to Tucson now. And I, I pray that God will bless you all. I'm going from there to Canada and back to Colorado and around, around, around. See, until Brother Tony's over there and a great thing has happened right under the Vatican in Rome. They're calling for a revival, a meeting. We come our whole revival in Rome. In Rome. <laughs> he just returned back. The people's all together. He got a great arena there. See, thousands and thousands. And it won't become for a revival. We want to see the glory of the Lord in the ministry. I don't know. I had to pray or see what the Lord will tell me. Oh, my. Remember, pray, all of us together. We're watching for the coming of our blessed Savior. Lo and behold, the fig leaves now becoming green. The gospel of His kingdom has gone to every nation. And we're near the end, can be seen. Oh, right? amen. Then gladly away we'll herald the message of His blessed appearing. Soon He's coming in glory to tell to one and all. Then awake ye saints of the Lord while slumber when the end is nearing. Let's get ready for that final call. <laughs> She'll turn at the west and ride back again one of these days. Just remember, she sure will. That's right. Until then, take the name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of woe, it will joy and comfort give you. Take it everywhere you go, precious name. Oh, how sweet! Oh, power and joy.
now in this last verse, let's sing it with bowed hearts now. Take the name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare. And when temptations around you gather, these things of Satan's kingdom, see, yeah. see, just breathe that holy name in prayer. Oh, That's all. Yeah. And walk away. It works. Hey, I've hey. tried it. <laughs> right. You just believe it now, because it will work. Just yeah. breathe his holy name in prayer. Yeah. The name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare when temptation around you yeah what do you do then just breathe in holy name the veil will come over your face then precious name precious name oh how sweet oh father bow our heads now while I ask Brother Beeler back there to come here to the platform. Precious name, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, precious name, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Now with our heads bowed and our hearts bowed. Brother Beeler, one of our associates here, Brother Essel Beeler, fine Christian brother, loyal man. I'm going to ask him if he'll dismiss the audience tonight in prayer. God bless you, Brother Beeler.